The course outline for your online course is one of the most important facets about your course. It's not only the roadmap for your course, but it's also a marketing tool. It's super important that you get this right even before you write a single line of course content. In this video, I'm going to give you three tips along with five action steps to create the perfect course outline. Hi, I'm Ben, and I am the co-founder of Fly Plugins. We are the creators of WP Courseware, the leading online course plugin for WordPress. And on this YouTube channel, we give tips, tutorials, and strategies for creating and selling online courses. If you've not chosen a course topic or validated your course topic, you may want to click the card above to check out the course blueprint strategy playlist, which includes videos on choosing a course topic as well as validating your course topic. Creating a course outline might seem like a pretty obvious process. I mean, you could just whip out Evernote and create a bullet list for your modules and course units, but the more thought you put into this, the more effective your course will be in helping students succeed. Plus, You'll make it super easy to be efficient when you begin creating course content. Just think, if you help a student to become successful and you help them to meet their learning objectives, you will have created a raving fan who will recommend your course and likely purchase another course from you. And a good course outline will also come in handy when you go to market your course. I know I've mentioned this before, but I promise the more effort you put into planning your course, the more benefit you'll reap when creating and selling your course. Okay, let's begin with three tips that will be useful while you are in the process of creating your course outline. Tip number one, use the least number of steps possible. In my last video, I spoke about creating your course objectives and I mentioned that nobody likes fluff. Help your students get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. When it comes to learning, I wish we could download information like you download a program to your computer or your gaming system. You know, like... I know Kung Fu. You'll need to determine the steps that are required from where your ideal student is right now to where they will need to be after finishing the course. The two key points here are that you need to start where your ideal student is and get them to their end goal in the least amount of steps possible. Tip number two, use background facts and supplemental details sparingly. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and you have absolutely no clue where the conversation is going? because the person you are speaking to keeps going down a different rabbit hole. Oh, hey mom. Oh wow, the mailman almost ran you over? Oh, you've been working out at the gym, huh? Uh -huh. Oh, you ran into Uncle Bob at the health food store? Uh-huh. Oh, you're, you're thinking about taking guitar lessons. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, you want me to go ice skating with you tomorrow? Sometimes first time course creators have the tendency to include every single detail and background fact and they end up giving their students a bad experience. Let's face it, none of us like information overload. It makes us feel overwhelmed. Then when we get overwhelmed, it causes paralysis by analysis and we end up either not taking action or we just move on to something different. Tip number three, Cease to comprise course outlines embodied with sesquipedalian expressions. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> exactly. Tip number three is to be sure and use simple language and ideas in your outline. Stop using $10 words and technical jargon in your modules and lesson titles. These are things you can include in your course and teach your students, but don't take a simple concept and overcomplicate it unless you know that your students are at a level that they can understand those terms. Okay, now I've given you three tips or guidelines to follow when thinking through your course outline. Now here are the five steps for creating an effective course outline. Step number one, begin with the end in mind. 
You've probably heard this strategy a million times in planning just about anything from starting a business to baking a cake. But in reality, reverse engineering is one of the most effective strategies for accomplishing just about anything. It's no different for an online course. What is it that your students will walk away with? Where is their destination? Here are a few examples of destinations. How to become a blogger. How to use a DSLR camera. How to play the guitar. Once you figure it out, you will want to write it down. To do this, I am going to recommend using one of two tools for this entire process. You can use one or the other depending on which one suits you. The first tool I recommend is a mind mapping tool. There are several mind mapping tools available. However, my favorite one is MindMeister. You can create one mind map for free, but you'll have to pay to create additional mind maps. There is a free mind mapping tool called Coggle. I've used both of these in planning courses and even planning business strategies. I'll link to both of these in the description below. The other tool I recommend is Trello. Trello uses boards, lists, and cards to enable you to organize and prioritize your projects. It's perfect for planning out a course outline or even managing a project. It's free to use and I'll provide a link in the description below. I'm actually going to demo Trello for this process. The destination I chose is going to be how to create a WordPress website. For our example, I'm going to create a board called how to create a WordPress website. Step number two, determine each major step necessary. If you were looking at your course from a bird's eye view, you'd want to see in a basic sense what the plan is from getting from the start of the course to the final destination. These are major milestones, which will eventually become the modules, sections, or chapters in your course. The idea here is not to get into the details of each step. We just want to outline the major top level steps or major milestones. In continuing with our demonstration, I'm going to create several Trello lists, install WordPress, configure WordPress, add WordPress theme, add WordPress plugins, create pages, create and add main menu. Step number three, create the action steps required to successfully reach each major step. Basically, each major step has a series of smaller detailed steps that are required before moving on to the next major step. Again, we don't need to get super detailed. Just summarize each action step necessary to reach the next milestone. In continuing with our demonstration, we can simply start breaking down each major step. Check it out. Now we will begin to add cards to our install WordPress list. Download WordPress from wordpress.org, upload core WordPress files to web server, create a database, create a database user, assign database user to database granting full permission, configure the wpconfig.php file. Okay, you get the idea. In the end, these will likely be your course lessons. However, we aren't going to get too detailed just yet. This is just a series of steps between the milestones. The cool thing about cards is that you can add a description, you can add attachments, you can even give yourself a deadline. If you are working with a team, you can add comments for communication. Another cool thing with cards is you have the ability to rearrange them or move them to another list or even another board altogether. Step number four, outline the knowledge steps required for each of your tasks. We now have the milestones laid out and we also have the action steps between the milestones. Now we are going to get into the nuts and bolts. We need to give our students some knowledge to take action or to make a decision. Let's pick the install WordPress milestone and the configure wpconfig.php file action step. Here is where you can begin to add in some of the details that will be discussed within the lesson. A really cool feature of Trello is that you can add checklists to the card and that is what we are going to do. So we basically would add things like enter db name, enter db user, enter db password create salts, turn on debug. 
The cool thing with these checklists is that you can click and drag them to rearrange the order and you can create multiple checklists per card. Step number five, review the outline in detail. This is where you want to really start thinking about the order of each milestone, the order of each step, and maybe even the order of the course content within each lesson. The cool thing about Trello is that everything is click and drag. So you can adjust things on the fly without having to recreate any of the course elements. Of course, this can all be done on a mind map or you can actually use both tools. Some people like the mind map option to simply perform a brain dump. Basically, you can open up a mind map and just dump everything in no particular order. Then within the mind map, you can sort out your ideas into milestones and action steps. Then you can transfer it over to Trello so that you can add in additional details. It all comes down to doing what you are comfortable with. Both methods work great. Even the hybrid method works great. The main goal here is to organize and structure your course in the most simplistic and effective way possible. Do you have any tools that you use to brainstorm ideas like Trello or MindMeister? I'd love to hear about them. Simply place them in the comments below. If you've learned something new and you've not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, would you do me a huge favor and click that subscribe button? Oh, don't forget to hit the bell so that you'll immediately know when we release one of our super helpful videos just like this one. I really appreciate you watching this video and I will see you in the next video.